Welcome to a brand new video diary, which I'm hoping there'll be many and many of these done for my own YouTube channel. I've basically decided that I'm way too busy to be putting videos together on my own channel, so why not make the workload even more and uh, start doing this bloody diary piece sort of thing. To be honest with you, my, my own video diet or my own YouTube channel has been a little bit stagnant lately and well it's been stagnant for the past two years to be honest since i haven't had the time to be doing a rainbow vid um to put my last couple of trips together yeah i've done nothing for my own channel so i'm basically what these are gonna be are just very raw sort of diaries that i'm just gonna throw together i'm not gonna do an all singing and dancing edit with music and moody music blah 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 this is basically just something that i wanted to do last year to be honest i wanted to start it in january last year which i did actually start filming but again just got too lazy to put Put them together so this time round i've got my gopro i haven't got a piss around putting mics on and tarting around with you know blimmin sort of uh you know my sony cameras my slrs and what have you i'm just basically going to film most of this diary off of my gopro and it's basically what i'm going to be getting up to in you know the months leading to whenever basically i'm just going to try and do as many as possible so i was going to start this one in january to be honest but i had an unfortunate mishaps with the gopros that i had at the time i had a couple of hero sevens which i started to record this diary from which i ended up buggering up to be honest with these gopros you can you can unlatch the side of them and then or like take the side door off which was only a little door on the sevens and you can then basically plug a power pack into them and then run a time lapse all night and that's what i pretty much do for all my time lapse stuff i sort of use gopros plug the batteries into them and then just let them run and me being a twat that i am i forgot to put the doors back on them and then i've put them underwater to like film fish and I've ended up buggering the GoPros up. So I had two brand new Hero set. Well, I say brand new. One was like nine months old. And I left the door off that, put it underwater. What I'd actually done for that one, total div. I, me and Brad, we were filming the new Explorer rods that fox have done you know like the the retractable rods where you can fish them at eight foot and you can fish them at ten foot and we had this spot rocking on raisery one and yeah i thought well we'll put a gopro down we'll get a bite like underwater bite sort of thing thought yeah yeah you know that'd be the one and so i've ended up putting my gopro on a pole and then put it down underneath the water and you can still see the screen as it was under the water and um and yeah there was what we didn't realize there was a dot in the middle of the screen and we just presumed that that was like the the small mesh bag that we'd put we'd obviously put the rig in front of the gopro and the fish kept coming in and then like diverting away from that like soon as they'd get to the rig they just like bolt off and i said to brad they, they know that camera's there there's no way that they're um we're gonna get this bite so we went as we pulled the bloody camera out the water the camera's going did it did it did 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 it, did it, and it's got this error sign on the back so it'd been making that noise underneath what no wonder the fish were sort of like bolt you know spooking off of the spot and um yeah i'd basically buggered me gopro because i hadn't put the bloody door on it had an error on it because it had a load of water rushing inside of it so that was a pain in the ass so i ended up buying another one and not taking that one back i did the bloody same thing i was filming bartlett over at farlow's uh, on a winter series and i was using the gopro again for a time lapse thing with the door off of it and i ended up he caught one late at night real lovely scaly one i thought yeah i'll well, film that underwater i've actually got the footage of that and somehow i managed to salvage the footage off of that one done the same thing again buggered another so i've got like 800 quids worth of gopros that were buggered and they had like wool water inside you could like they'd all gone misty and this that and the other. Oh, for god's sake so i, I tried me luck luckily i'd bought them from phone's going berserk uh luckily i bought them from 
Comet. Is it Comet? Curries, curries, and well, whatever it doesn't matter. And yeah, I took them back there, and I went, oh, I don't know what's wrong with these. They, they, you know, they're, they're taking on water and this that. And mate, it was like, yeah, you can have your money back, or you can upgrade them. So I ended up, I ended up buying the missus a bloody Apple Watch, and got myself a brand new Hero Eight, which is what I'm filming this off of now. So yeah, that was a nice start to the year. So I've now using obviously this gopro i'm going to put these video diaries together via this gopro like i say i haven't got to piss around with mics and what have you and i'll use some of the footage from the films that i'm obviously shooting whilst i'm out and about so what have i been up to well in we'll, we'll kick start this off from february so at the start of february i was out with bartlett we filmed the last one in england of the winter series five this year we we're over at linear fisheries and we we're on braze nose one and bart smacked them you know as the bart man does he absolutely you know tore it a new one but yeah nightmare edit loads of fish it's a bit weird you know because you're always desperate for fish when you're out obviously doing a shoot but sometimes too many fish can almost ruin a vid which sounds ridiculous to some people. i know what do you mean too many fish but you know you don't want to you don't want to exhaust the film with just bloody fish 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 which i know is what we're out there doing but it's, yeah it can be very difficult at times to obviously put a film together when you've got too many fish but anyway that was an amazing shoot and the whole of the winter series five to be fair has been absolutely mega it's been wicked we've caught on all of them not had to reshoot them i did the first one over at limbrook which was really cool and now i'm going to be doing the last one which is across the pond so as you might may have noticed i'm actually on the tunnel at the minute on the tunnel oh, my God. i'm in the tunnel go about to go through the tunnel i'm actually on the bloody train but yeah so i'm going over to france the lads at dna they'd booked themselves a holiday at crete lakes and i just basically invited myself along i was like right you know we get normally we shoot like sort of four shoots i think we do for the winter series for the for the last few years which is what we've done over in england so far but for this one i thought we'll do a fifth one and we're i'm coming to france with you boys it's a lads holiday for them i'm gonna sort of present it i was gonna get bonesy to present it and he ain't turned up till monday so it's a saturday at the moment I'm on the train at the minute and yeah, I'm going to be headed over to Crete Lakes. Um, I've got a week out there, I've got until Friday. Hopefully, we can catch a few pigs. Many, many pigs in bloody Crete Lakes. It's unbelievable. Absolute Pigsville. Perhaps they should rename it Pigsville. And yeah, I'm looking forward to this trip, to be honest, and this shoot. So, I'll be obviously using me me diary you know and showing you exactly what i get up to as the week goes on so at the minute i'm sat on the train obviously waiting for it to to go into the tunnel anyway so once we've done that shoot with bartlett we had the last two days of the harvest with the wonderful man that is mark simmons mother go away why because i don't like you what are you doing here anyway? You're not getting paid. You're not getting paid today anyway. Because I told you not to come. Because you're a dickhead. <laughs> so then, John. <laughs> What's, that? What's going on? Oh, I've got some stories. Who's oh, no, no, no. got some stories? Oh, no. Well, I'm sworn to secrecy. <laughs> because I'm sort of involved. <laughs> yeah, you are actually. <laughs> That's work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is not. Is that for the podcast? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is the <laughs> intro. God, tell us. Tell us what you're gonna say. <laughs> oh, is that the tip? Is it? That's the tip. Is, it, is that to keep your feet warm? That's, that's, the, that's to keep my feet dry. In a very oh, old in a very old dry suit. I do yeah, some repairs on that. <laughs> Smart. Don't Wait, what do you What no, are you no, saying no. about that, John? What, how do you feel about? <laughs> I've got some stories. On, I've got some stories I'd like to tell about oh, John. Shut up! Are we, are we recording? <laughs> We're recording. <laughs> Sound is loud and clear. I might have to mic you up, John. <laughs> I'm not saying anything, but I think Dean Fletcher weighed the British record wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Did he now? It was an 
know if we're in. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. You gotta keep that, you gotta keep yeah, that. Yeah. That could be a good little start. <laughs> 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 Let's go! Oh, yummy! Start here, otherwise. Start here. What do you look like? You look like the biggest bloody lemon. Lemon? Is that all you got? Is it? Lemon. I got more choice words for you, Slim. God, it is looking quiet, isn't it? Yeah, under there. We were harvesting our smallest pond that we've got and which Very have got nice. the, our smallest fish in as well, our sea threes. Which, yeah, that wow, they were magnificent carp. All of them are absolutely gorgeous. And I know what you all might be thinking, all might be like looking at, you know, um, all them fish in the boat and stuff. I don't think, you know, it's bad fish care in there, but that's how, that's how they get farmed. That's how they get harvest, you know. It's the best way of doing it. And to be honest, like, them, them fish that are on the farm that are being handled every year, netted every year, put into boats, being weighed, every fish gets weighed. They're immaculate, you know. It's a, I know that we're, we're out there and we're catching, you know, old ones and we're treating them like babies and this, that and the other, and, you know, you, which you've got to do. Don't get me wrong, you know, you, it's, you're looking after your own, you know, our heritage of carp fishing as such. And... You've got to look after them. Um, but when you're carp farming, you're farming thousands and thousands of fish in one day on that on that um on that harvest we did 700 carp in one day every single one of them weighed and then they went out into their new homes and then we get more sea ones and twos and uh, yeah ones and twos and then they'll get harvest the following year at sea threes but yeah wow magnificent all oh, there was some lovely 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 carp there and yeah the bloodline from simo now of all of the carp on on site ah, oh, they are unbelievable absolutely incredible creatures and yeah that each and every one of them is like my baby you know it's just it's hard to bloody sell them to be honest with you because they are magnificent magnificent creatures every single one of them now it's really good to see it must have been horrible harvesting them carp back in the day when the old simos were plain and you know just not very nice looking creatures i suppose you know just scaleless and boring looking things yeah i wouldn't like to have been harvesting then so yeah now you know they are lovely creatures good bunch of lads on the harvest uh, you know tommy phil the fish john the crim uh we have a right laugh honestly it is it's really good and i look forward to it every year i, I work around about two weeks in the christmas period so basically when when everyone's on the Christmas break, I'm out in soppy, horrible, silty, muddy ponds and um, harvesting fish for Simo. You know, it's our bus busiest period. And you obviously harvest them that time of year because the water's cold, they're not thrashing about. And um, yeah, you know, it's it's a lot better or, or easier to get things done when, when the water's cold. So that's why we do it at that time of year. So I work around two weeks around Christmas. And then like I say, we just finished them last two days. That's it done for the year now. So it's on with other things. So what did I get O2 after that? I had a Mozza versus shoot i believe now my brain is like a bit of a sieve i have written things down in my diary so yeah we did that yeah and then i did a moza versus moza versus spurgeon i'll tell you what it was hilarious from the get-go that shoot absolutely wicked spurge is a legend you know anyone that's met spurge he is an absolute legend he is and uh and yeah so it was me versus spurge i won't give away the film's not even out at the minute this might be out by the time that the films come out um oh, it was a great like like soon walking down the pond i had spurge on the ropes on the get goes barrow went over which was hilarious oh not a good start for the old spurge <laughs> hey <laughs> 
He's gone over already, we're only 10 yards on the car park. <laughs> you right there, Steve? It's all downhill from now on, son. <laughs> And then when we got there, something went wrong with his deeper. Well, nothing went wrong with his deeper. It was the person using the bloody thing. Absolutely hilarious. Bollocks. What's going on, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> What's that up in the tree? What's that in the tree? You don't know? Should we tell everyone? What's your phone reading? <laughs> <laughs> that's, got, that's got to be that old. <laughs> what, what's your phone reading, Steve? <laughs> and he had cast it right up in this. Oh, it was so funny. So, so funny. And, um, and yeah, so that was hanging there for the first 24 hours. He had this deeper up there, proper hilarious. And I was taking the piss out of him the whole time of his deeper being up on this up on this tree like right at the highest point like it just it couldn't have been more further away from him <laughs> we up to Sverd? just uh trying a bit of recovery work bit of recovery yeah. work try this should be happens. funny oh he's in the right area he's warming up oh he's warming up. get warm up car yeah. and um I, so I ended up feeling sorry for him in the end to be honest i ended up um doing the cut, cut I, I think I did about, I don't know, 10, 15 casts, I kept saying, one more cast, one more cast, and yeah, I managed to get it out for him, and uh, yeah, bless his heart, he managed to get his deeper back, and um, and yeah, I hope that the carp gods would shine on me, sort of thing, but you'll have to go and watch that Mozza versus to see what happens in that, but yeah, thoroughly enjoyable shoot, great laugh with Spurgeon, always is, whenever you're around that lovely man. And then, after that, so once I'd done that through February, we were like the third week into February, I think, at that point, we had the Northern show. Wow, what a manic show that was. It, was like, it gets busier and busier every year. Well done to Reed, you know, on that show. He works his art out, you know, and uh, and yeah, I know Reedy and his dad, or, or most of the family really well, and his dad's like mega, mega proud of him, of what he's done, you know, proper, um, yeah, proper dad and son goals there. You know, you, you know what I'm trying to say, and um, and yeah, his dad's proud of him for what he does over at the Norwood Show. And it's great to see, you know, how busy it is. The DNA stand was unbelievable. It was just rammed out constantly on the first day. We had ran out of like the switch and the S7 within like by 12 o'clock like by midday it was just ridiculous we had to send the lorry back it was, yeah mental mental show thoroughly enjoy the northern show it is definitely the best show out there so yeah if ever you've never been to the northern show you must come it's just fantastic to see every you know all the people that all the companies that are there and oh, it's, it's just wonderful 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 so i really enjoy that show and i thoroughly look forward to it every single year um, so yeah, what else have I been up to? Uh, a lot of family sort of stuff. We had Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day, I had actually managed to convince my missus that a nice romantic place to go would be a 140 acre lake that I've been fishing for the last couple of years. That's another film in itself, not gonna talk too much about it. But yeah, I'd actually managed to convince her that for Valentine's Day, we should go to this 140 acre lake where I've got to dig me boat out of me hidey hole that I've got over there and um, and go and spend the weekend on an island with a great big fire. The fire was the bit that, that did it, you know. I was like, you know, I'm gonna have a lovely big fire. It'd be lovely and romantic. Uh, but Storm Dennis, I think, was on the go, which didn't bother us. We didn't care about the wind and all that. We thought it'd be exciting out in the boat. But it rained and it rained and it rained. And, yeah, we called it off on the last minute. She she was more buzzing to go than I was, to be honest with you. Just mental. So, yeah, if ever you guys need any tips on, obviously, you know, marriage goals of oh, how to get your missus God. to go to a 140-acre bloody lake in a storm and be up for it to be honest i don't i don't know how i convinced her but she was well up for it but because of the rain and the fact that we wouldn't be able to have a fire because of the torrential rain we ended up bidding it off but i'll, I'll no doubt get her back out there sometime soon 
but yeah i'm gonna have a yeah i'm gonna have a break off of that that pond for this year i've got myself a brand new ticket which um i will obviously document on this diary as and when it starts happening in april i believe it's like the first of april that starts so yeah my first trip on there funny enough i've actually got like a carpology video film type thingy to do with old um noodle boy oh and uh and yeah so yeah i've got that coming up in april but you know that that's for another diary obviously train is on the move now thank god so that is where we're at at the moment i'm obviously going to document this trip this is going to be obviously a shoot for the winter series so i'll be running around like a madman hopefully filming the boys with lots of pigs and documenting you know my own fishing for this diary piece whilst i'm out there for the week ahead so i'm going to leave it there for the minute wait till the train gets the other side get to the other side and then get to lake it's only about a three hour journey once i get to the other side yeah really looking forward to this trip cannot wait let's go in oh right arrive safe and sound that was a mission getting here the weather was savage it was not the one so we have ended up on lake two are we on lake two yeah we are on lake two so yeah lake two and i'm in peg 11 which is here behind me this is me peg for the week we've got that div over there <laughs> what are you doing in me van james do your job for you oh are you so james is in the peg next door and yeah i've obviously got these pylon lines here so you can't really cast out of this swim but because i've got because i've got the bait boat it's a, a bait boat only sort of swim sort of thing so so yeah looking forward to this wind's trickling in here nicely looks lovely it does look nice down there oh look there's the old uh, no casting in this swim sign but yeah looks really nice a few of the other lads are dotted out around the other lakes i think you've got lake three over the other side there steve and nick are on there daz and who's the other one daz and someone or other but they're dotted around around the complex sort of thing so yeah this is going to be home for the week so i'm going to get all set up today doubt i'll get fishing tonight to be honest it's well it's getting late as it is it's r4 already so we're going to try and get all the tents everything set up so we can get on with the filming first thing in the morning but yeah looking forward to it should be good first night then and yeah i'm sadly i'm not going to get the rods out tonight i've only just finished this pitch black it's been dark for hours to be honest with you but i've got the tent up got everything sorted cook tents all up that's if the bloody thing stays there to be honest we're like in the teeth of the wind here and that thing's blowing around like no one's business and i'm in no doubt that i'm gonna wake up in the morning and that thing's gonna be gone but yeah everything's ready to rock and roll i've got all rigs tied sort of like me boat and all that is down here i'm not taking that boat out on its first outing in the pitch black that ain't gonna happen it'll probably bloody end up on another lake but yeah i've got all rigs tied there sort of d rigs which i'll probably use and i think i don't know it's weird i'm i'm undecided of how to approach this to be honest so i've got some rigs tied anyway i think i'm going to fish one on a d rig and maybe two out on solid bags i will decide that tomorrow morning sort of thing but everything's ready to rock and roll i'm going to get up first thing and yeah get this shoot underway i've got like a night time lapse going on the old 360 camera behind me which just got an absolute soak in so i don't know how that's going to come out but i'll leave it running anyway and and yeah that's the state of play i think hook boat wise i'm probably going to end up using these little pink perils 10 mil specials i've actually got 10s and 12s set inside there a bit of a mix up sort of thing so i think that's what i'm going to go in with some some of them i've got eight millers with me i've sort of got switch eight millers as well as some slk eight millers and yeah just going softly softly i suppose 
and see how it goes. So yeah, I'm gonna get an early night tonight and then yeah, we're gonna crack on with things in the morning, but thoroughly looking forward to it. It'd be nice to wear a couple of showing, but so I'm told they don't really show a lot on Creek Lakes, but hey ho, is what it is. So yeah, that's everything sorted, ready to rock and roll in the morning. Well, good morning. Got up first light this morning and looking out at the pond and saw nothing. No. Oh, first cup of tea of the day. Lovely. Very nice. But yeah, I've had my eyes peeled. I've seen one flat spot out to my left hand side. So that's something to go on on the left hand rod, I think. I'm unsure about the other two. But yeah, this is the cook tent. So here's my fridge and everything there. Set up on a table and it's a bit of a camera equipment, a sort of cooking station there. This is all nice and lovely jubbly. So yeah, all my little treats down in there. Yes. So yeah, we'll get fishing today and then hopefully at some point, fingers crossed we'll catch something. No one else has had anything in the group as of yet. So, you know, it's still early days, still that first first proper day today, really. So I'd imagine a few of the boys will be getting their rods sorted out today. And yeah, we'll see what happens. I do believe later on we've got a roast dinner to look forward to. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Lamb as well, my favourite, so. All right, I'm going to have this first cup of tea and start sorting my life out, which could take a while. Excuse the air, I look like a Muppet, I know, but... Oh, dear one, van's buggered. That is not the start that I need. So we're about to go around and film rivers with old Chewbacca here. <laughs> and a bloody van won't start oh i don't know what's happened they're meant to cut themselves out when the battery's getting low but that hasn't happened for some reason and now the bloody thing's dead so i'm now sat here no rods in the pond because i want to go and film something with rivers and yeah now we got to wait for the bloody bailiff to come round to jump start the van and get it going this is not the way i wanted to start this trip and the thing is it always buggers the batteries up doesn't it whenever the bloody batteries die on these poxing things so i'm gonna have hell i know i am i'm gonna be petrified to turn the van off and i haven't got enough fuel to run it for the week so oh, what a nightmare the things you don't see on shoots i suppose Not the bloody one. Oh, God. So much for filming an intro. We managed to run round all day and film the other boys, but just as it come to filming my intro, which is going to be the start of the film, heavens have opened up and they haven't stopped. And using electrical equipment in this weather is just not the one. We're absolutely sodden wet. Oh, Chewy down there, is, he's had it, he's done in, no more, no more, no more, yeah, the rain is just horrendous, oh god, on me tablet down there, me blimmin um, bait boat tablet, sat underneath the umbrella down there, one gust of wind and that'll no doubt bloody go in the pond, so I do need to go and get that in at some point, but, oh man, this weather is not the one, it's horrendous. Yeah, it looks like we'll end up filming the intro in the morning, I'd imagine. I'm absolutely starving, but can't be asked to cook. And, yeah, I'll have to get some food on in a minute. But, yeah, I finally managed to get three rods out in the pissing rain. And, you know, it's just, wow, horrendous, to be honest. And I had liners almost instantly, so now I'm pinging out that I've gone too far out. The wind has been hacking into this corner for the last four days I believe the bailiff said so I am a little bit worried that I've gone too far out into the pond but to be honest I haven't gone a million miles out I'd say I'm probably fishing at about 12-13 wraps I'm not sure obviously because I've used the bait boat 
I managed to get the autopilot working on there, but but yeah, it doesn't obviously tell you the distance in wraps as such. So I've ended up putting mad, um, uh, marker elastic onto the reel. So, you know, if I do get a bite, I can just put the rods out. Once the marker elastic comes through, I just clip it up. I've just, I've put them dead in front of the, in front of the reel sort of thing. And yeah, you know, that's the state of play at the minute. The rods are out in the pond. It's pouring with rain. What's the chance? I tell you, I know what's going to happen now. So one of us is going to end up getting a bloody bite in the weather that we've got in a minute, and it's not the one filming when it's pouring with rain. That'll be the thing that'll probably finish me off today, to be honest with you. Get a bite in the pissing rain. You know it's going to happen, didn't you? Him giggling in the background there, because he knows full well that we're going to get a bite in the rain. Yeah. Oh God, we might have to film this Winter Series Office GoPro. <laughs> Right. Oh, look how bloody drenched I am. Warming the feet up over the stove. Don't do this at home, kids. Oh, God, this is horrible. I am sopping, sopping wet. The old lens is steaming up, not the one. Yeah, not nice. Everything is soaking. Trousers are sodden wet all the way through, not ideal, but liners have continued out there somewhere. Let me wipe that lens again, but yeah, the old uh, liners have continued on the rods. Let's set out there in a minute. I'm just gonna dry some of me kit out, i.e., me feet, <laughs> and yeah, Arsenal are playing tonight in the FA Cup against Portsmouth, so listen to that and hopefully we win that along with a bite tonight fingers crossed oh, freezing for the old hot water bottle in there big edge Jay. Oh. Well, first bite, first morning. There's a lot of good in this. One in the net, yeah. Sorted. Lovely, jubbly. Yes, good morning, good morning, good morning. Yeah, oh. I had liners all night last night on all three bloody rods keeping me up the whole night and yeah do, do you know what i got up for one of them thinking that's a way it must be a way so i just pulled up tight stayed there for ages and by the time i'd got me kicks on and then jumped out the bivvy bloody bobbin was falling back down dirt at like two o'clock in the morning not the one but yeah, first thing this morning, left hand rod's gone, which funny enough is the bloody closest rod in, which is making me think that I've definitely gone and maybe a bit too far out on the other two rods, hence the bloody liners. But yeah, just landed him. Down there, look. Ideal, lovely jubbly on the old solid bag. 
dropped via the old boatage so yeah yeah buzzing absolutely buzzing on the first morning not too shot well none of the lads have had anything else on the other lakes as of yet other than dan who's on lake five which i believe is like the runs water over here and what have you he's just had one this morning so the shoot is underway on the first morning ideal so we've got one over here obviously dan's got one over there that's being filmed at the moment over there so um, well, it's not being filmed though at the minute, so it's just way too bloody early. I'm about to go and film that one over there. Div, I'm the cameraman. Unbelievable. Anyway, I'm going to have a cup of tea, get my mind back in reality mode, get this fish filmed, go and film Dan's. Winter series is underway. Ideal. First fish on this diary as well. Even better. Sorry, mate. It's right. Here we go, here we go. Any of you boating cameramen out there? Great bit of kit. Get on the Matrix bait brolly. Yeah, all underneath there. Staying dry. Great bit of kit. You can get like this attachment thing. That that comes with it. Need to get an insert though, and then it sort of sits like that on the old tripod, but I haven't got the insert for here. So obviously that insert there goes on that part of the pole. For the brolly and then yeah you can obviously undo that if you've got the insert which i've bloody lost so i'm gonna have to get another one and uh yeah you can attach it straight to there and then have your little brolly underneath your uh over the top of your camera ideal hey chewy <laughs> <laughs> here we go then first morning first ever creep lake Uy. carp at 36 pounds Gorgeous, gorgeous creature. They said there were lookers in here and he's a looker in my eyes. Absolutely beautiful. Caught on me solid bag with me ever faithful crayfish mini mix on a PB wafter with loads of little eight millers in the boat. So yeah, that, that working absolutely wonders. People saying use lots of liquids on here and that's exactly what I've done. I've doused the boat, drowned the boat in fact, in switch liquid hydro spod syrup and this is the result on the first morning i couldn't be happier it's pouring with rain but who cares yes ah what a carp mega Mwah. thank you girl all good, good chewy do you want a kiss, want a kiss? <laughs> Oh dear. Oh dearie bloody dear. Oh my god, my day is just getting worse and worse. I can't even get out my bloody door at the minute. Rope snapped already trying to get the van out. Oh, there's a dirty great hole down there. Oh. Well, I managed to finally get the bloody van. Well, I didn't get the van out of the ditch. The bailiff Lee got me out of the ditch. She's seen better days though, the poor old girl. Yeah, she's a bit muddy. That was spick and span before I got here. Not the one. So what had actually happened is I'd gone off to film a fish for Daz. Daz had caught one, which was random, proper, proper random one. It, this morning, Daz had hooked one and there's quite a savage bar on Lake Free over here and it cut him off. And then half an hour later, he's had another bite. And when he's got the fish in, it's got his rig in its mouth that he had been cut off from. So he's got two rigs in his mouth, both Dazza's rigs. Unbelievable. Yeah, me mental, absolutely mental. So it's basically, he's cut him off and then 60 yards to Dazza's left, which is his furthest rod left, he's picked up another one of his rigs, gone on the feed again. Greedy bastard. So yeah, mental, mental, mental. So yeah, next minute, my receiver's going, so I've left old Chewbacca 
with me rods whilst I've gone round to film it. And me, uh, there he is, look. Oh, Chewy's just popped his head out. So I've left Chewy with, with the rods. I've got me receiver, which will work anywhere on this complex. If ever you're um, gonna go traveling and uh, you need a receiver, RX Plus is the way forward, definitely. I know full well that that receiver will work anywhere on this complex. Obviously you need someone looking after your rods, but but yeah, the RX Plus receiver is a great bit of kit. Great, great bit of kit. And uh, anyway, yeah, so after I'd filmed or halfway through filming Dazza with his fish, my receiver starts going. So I'm panicking at that point then. So I've jumped in the van. I've tried to swing the van round over where them boys are in Lake Free and nearly got the van stuck. So I just thought, you know what? I'll reverse all the way back. Now, when you're in a panic mode and your receiver's going, reversing around a lake where the track isn't exactly built for transits, yeah, ended up in the ditch. And this is obviously what happens when you have to come and get the bailiff to dig you out which i'm more than grateful for don't get me wrong but someone needs to clean this van now chewy come here a minute come here clean it yourself. <laughs> yeah as well uh chewy's not up for cleaning it but van's gonna need a good bloody clean oh you coming to cut where's your sponge literally where's your sponge I'll let you go and shoot one fish on your own. Yeah. And this is the state you bring the van back in. Well, James, if you would have got the rod... Uh, oh, this, oh, it gets better, right? So, so I'm panicking on the way back, and when I've got stuck, I've phoned old Chewy, and I've gone, what's going on? What do you mean, what's going on? Rod's going, James. Is it? Oh, my God! Yes, James. What's the rod The going? rod's going. Oh, is it? What's He's zipped up. The rod? He zipped up in the cook tent with both burners on going i ain't got a scooby moz i don't know what's going what's on there a fish on the rod well obviously not james I've because my case. because two hours later i come back that and the uh sense they was just liners yeah oh he could sense they were liners <laughs> you do have the power of the dark side eh, chewy <laughs> div so uh so yeah that that is um state of play uh what day are we on First day? Is it first day? Or set? I don't know. Monday? No, yeah, Monday. Monday, Monday, Monday. So you had the rods out. Van's in the right state. Not only is the bloody battery gone on the poor old girl, she now got herself stuck. Oh, look at the state of that wheel. That ain't very healthy, is it? No. Not the one. So anyway, it's still pouring with rain. Do you know what? Has it actually stopped raining since we've been here? No. It hasn't, is it? No. It's not stopped raining from the moment we've bloody well got here. This, I'd like, we're going to get kicked off. Look at the state of that. That was lovely grass at one point. I did ask the bailiff if it was right to set up up here. Don't fall well, it'd be a bog hole. So, yes, that is the state. No, he's still got two burners on the bloody go. I'm trying to dry my coat out, thanks to your idea of filming, you know, from the middle of the lake. Well, James, you know. These things have to be done. Yeah. These ideas right, and... Right camera bitch I've been on this trip. Have your bollocks, James. <laughs> have your bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> right, rods are out there. Just, um, I've got one more to redo me right arm rod with the old beautiful boat down there. I'll tell you what, what a bit of kit this is. The RT4 is the one. Absolute mega, mega boat, that. And, yeah. That is a look at the old lake too. I don't know if um, if I've shown you guys yet the actual lake. It's not it's not very big, obviously. Look, that's a far bank there, and um, I've got geezer opposite me in peg eighteen, and then no one in seventeen sixteen. Uh, there's a mad Dutchman in fifteen, and uh, how the bloody hell is there fifteen pe eighteen pegs on here, but yet there's only four pegs on each bank. Well, that 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 was the um, the general. I, not, I don't. Pegs on I know. So what? How is that? Why is there eighteen peg eighteen and peg? Oh, I don't know. Am I on peg eleven? Where's peg one? 
There's only four. No, there's some on that bank there as well. No, there isn't. There's no, there's uh, James. There's no pegs on that far bank. I'm telling you. I don't know how they've worked out the pegs on here. Chewy will find out. No doubt he'll um, consult the dark side later on. What a plank. What are you doing? What are you doing? What's on, did it? I'll get done for copyright. Well, mate, I am Chewbacca. You're not, you're more a bit. Da, 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 da. You look more like Jabba da, the Hutt. Oh, <laughs> my God! <laughs> Do you want a cup of tea? No, Jabba. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll turn this off now, everyone's bored. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have a word. No. Day four no on video diary. James no still got f***ing gas on. <laughs> James. Mate, it's freezing. It might be freezing some, but I'm paying the gas bill. Mate, like, I've been in here all day. Every time you I know put you every time well have. you put that camera on me, you wait till I'm stood here so it looks <laughs> get it out of my face, Moz. So it looks like I haven't moved. <laughs> I don't, it is, it's a bit of a theme going on here, James, <laughs> isn't on, there? Uh, come on, Moz. Let's see the theme. A bit of a theme going on at you staying in this bloody tent whilst I do all the work. Well I'm in charge. Oh my god! In charge of what? The gas. Yeah, absolutely. That's so health and safety risk this gas is. It has to be 24 Stop hours. Your Steve Malenza. <laughs> Let me wipe it. <laughs> it has to be monitored 24 7. I'm sure it bloody well does. Oh, whose beer's that, James? <laughs> Stop giggling. I can't talk to you when you like this. Honestly. I don't want to be in your stupid diary on YouTube or whatever it is you're trying to do. I don't want to be in it. I haven't signed the waiver form. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Jack? Oh, God. It... Oh, you still switch it off. Hi. You, mate, it's good for the diary. Do you know when you watch things that you do with other people, like Bart, Bart's one? Yeah. You absolutely batter Bart. Yeah, no, and the, yeah, no. And, the, and to be he honest with me. You, I'll sit there and I laugh because I think it's funny. Yeah. But now, I'm two days into a week. <laughs> like, <laughs> two days into a week. And like I have genuinely, <laughs> I've had enough of you. Look at you. <laughs> I now understand what they all go through. And viewers, seriously, Boot was on the other foot. He wouldn't like it. Enough's enough. We don't deserve this. We don't deserve this. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. <sighs> yeah, you haven't paid me yet for this tuition. Oh, <laughs> my oh, God. Mate. Oh, is that our dinner? What's going on? Well, we ordered a dinner. What's yeah. the bloody time? We ordered a dinner. Ten to eight. So we ordered it yesterday. Yeah. And it's now arriving. A day late. Can, can you get that camera ready, Claire? <laughs> <laughs> what, James? This good? It, it sets a mood. Mate, I can't handle... It's like hand a moody scene bit. I, you, I can't handle it anymore. Honestly, what? where... Oh, do you think this is our dinner? Oh, here he is. He's here. Right. Go and get it, James. I'm going. Go and get it. Do something for once. See, look at this viewers being ordered about again. Hurry up, James. He's gone. <laughs> He's not even stopped. He's not here. What's he said, James? He said. <sighs> he said we catered for everybody except Mozza. Although you... you've got two roast dinners there. Yeah, let's have a look. Let's, let's Since when do you have a roast this is dinner? Like one of them a kebab uh... bloody. But this is like one of them YouTube when you buy a box. Hurry up about it, James. I'm hungry. It's when you buy a box. You ready? Ready? Yep. The big unveil. Oh, it looks, don't Ooh, look it bad. It does look good. <laughs> this, I'll turn this off. Well, then, I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the diary will have to wait. It'll have to wait. <laughs> I'm starving. That was the one. Wasn't it? Yeah, mate, it's the bollocks. That was the absolute yeah. one. I can't believe actually how nice that was. To be fair, considering it's turned up in a kebab box. Yeah. I'm fairly impressed with that. To yeah, be that was uh, compliments to the chef, whoever the bloody hell he it's is. It's almost made up for it being like 
over a day, a day late. Yeah. It's 48 hours late. <laughs> 48 hours late, but I kind, I kind of forgive them. <laughs> that was bloody lovely. That was ridiculously nice. What's the pudding? Um, cream egg thingy. Yeah, I might have a cream egg. Let's have a look. Bosh. Pudding. Bosh pudding? <laughs> or a Kit Kat. Or an apple. No, we'll have, to, we'll have the cream eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Gonna scare James. Wipe the lens. I'll hide somewhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mate. She's scared. Did you hear my liner then? Did you hear my liner? No. What are you doing, James? Well, most of the rain we've had have hardly made a difference. Why are you wasting the water? Put that oh, in the saucepan, you, James. You can't put that. Oh, I could. I've couldn't touch. I didn't think of that. If you want to start playing tricks like this, that, that is war. Get that out of my face. Mate, I swear <laughs> to God. We've never, we've never fell out, but I'm telling you, it's brewing. <laughs> <laughs> it's brewing. It's brewing. It's brewing. What does that mean? Brewing. What does brewing mean? It means you're John having, fluid. You're having it this week. Are you John? That could be a cockney slang don't for pick brewing. Up my mate. John Bluid. <laughs> John's boy, mate. You're you won't be careful because I'm John Bluid. <laughs> <laughs> mate, what is this stupid rope you keep leaving everywhere? Oh, mate, honestly, you are wearing me out now. Oh, James. Help me then, because I don't know how you think I'm going to pour out of a saucepan with no spout into here. So, this is another one for the viewers. Let's all watch Chewy get third degree burns. <laughs> Come on. You're not Chewy anymore, you're Jabber. Jabber. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jabber. Watch, if we tip that in there, we'll know how much to boil. Well, obviously, that's why you should have left it in there well, in the first I place. I like fresh please. water in my bottle. How you getting on with, with your bottle, Dave? <laughs> I get... <laughs> I'm not doing it while that's recording. Why? Because I can see an incident happening. An incident? And you... <laughs> <laughs> Mate, when that thing comes back on it, it'll be you treating me with third degree burns with this stupid idea of yours. Well, at least I'll have it recorded for insurance purposes. <laughs> my finger's bleeding. Ah, oh, do you want a plaster? <laughs> <laughs> Snort for us. The, mo the most wearing thing of this trip so far was the weather. Yeah. The last, you know, 24 hours, you've been bringing yourself up to be as annoying. You're right. And you have just gone straight over the, the line. Right, we're going for it. Mate, to be fair, I've mastered that. See, I told you it would be fine. Oh, yes. See, okay. I told you it would be fine. Mate, if anybody's watching this and does not take a hot water bottle, it's a life changer, isn't it? I didn't believe it until this trip. Told you. I never spilt a drop, to be fair. Ah, See, I told ah, you, that James. That scuffered your little comedy right? video, didn't it? Oh, no, let's all watch Chewy get burnt. <laughs> oh. Chewy get burnt. And then all of a sudden... Slow down, busy. Oh, then I was more like Yoda. I was just, you know... Four. Baby Yoda. Baby, baby Yoda. Baby Yoda. Baby, baby Yoda. Oh, yes, boss. You're such a crackhead. It's like you all just lay next to me, holding me all night, keeping me warm, and it... It isn't. <laughs> no, could you, there's actually more weight on that than there is you. Whatever, Jabber. Whatever, Jabber. <laughs> Are you going to turn me bloody gas off? No, yeah, what? needs to keep the temperature up to dry my coat. Oh, I'll take my coat now, actually. Yeah, take your bloody coat. Coming out the way. See, it's funny how my coat's dried a lot quicker than your coat has. Yeah, but where was my coat My coat being? is far superior. Far superior than... What are they called? <laughs> What 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 even is that? What is it? Primarni. What is it? Mate, don't not primarni. What's it called? Go on. I'm not Get your little plug in. I'm not disclosed. I'm not here to plug. Not disclosing no. how wet that stayed all bloody well down. It's oh. sopping wet still. Yes. Dirty thing. Let's Get yourself it. a fox jacket. Let's try it on. Stop pissing about. Oh, it is actually still wet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I told oh. you. What like, a the load whole of coat tat. was dried. Apart from like the very ends, right? So, you, you so the water's got inside the coat and then ran down yeah, the ends so, of the coat. It's funny. Let's, let's, let's test the, the end of my coat. Oh, very dry. But it gives you like a false sense of security because you get anything. Oh, yeah, 
oh, it's worked. Standing on the stove for 16 hours has worked until you slip your hand through that last five inch look and then oh, get it out of my face, boss. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, the word karma springs to mind now. Obviously, I'm not at Crete Lakes anymore. Things took a slight turn in uh, what went on from this point on, to be honest. That evening, after pissing around with James and having a mess about, like I said at the start of this diary, it wasn't going to be a serious, you know, uh, diary about you. I don't think you're going to learn a lot, but, you know, it's just things that get up to whilst we're out in the bank, you have a mess around with your mates and whatnot. And I'm, I'm doing my best to obviously document that. And, uh, yeah, me and Jay, whenever we go out, we always have a good laugh and what have you. So m mainly me taking the piss out of him, to be honest. But, yeah, things took a turn for the worse, like I've said, and I got really ill that night I went to bed and you know I think it was a day or two later I actually woke up in a French hospital which wasn't nice I went to bed that evening and literally woke up in a hospital didn't know where I was or nothing and yeah you know, it was quite frightening to be honest I was quarantined in a part of the hospital which just looked like an asylum to be honest with you it was it was not nice and um and yeah, I I just got really ill. Uh, it was a bit like a cold. Now this was when the coronavirus had all started off, and you know it, it was it, at its first stages of it, I suppose, um, for the whole world. And yeah, they tested me for coronavirus whilst I was in there. Said that I didn't have it. We're not quite sure exactly what. I had had to be honest but I got I got seriously ill you know um when I was in the hospital yeah I wasn't let's just say I don't think they wanted me there to be honest with you the, I, I mean I know hospital food ain't great but I don't know what that was that they served me that was like a black chicken thing that I attempted to eat to be honest and yeah then the nurses weren't that great to me in there you know I had this one nurse that she was just horrible. I, I had sort of tubes and stuff hanging out of my arms, obviously hooked up to some sort of drip, which wasn't working. You know, I woke up the next morning and the, and the drip was still, you know, in the, the bag hadn't drained and whatnot. I'm not a nurse, so I don't know what's going on, but it was obvious that, you know, the, the bag that was meant to be feeding me... Um, drugs i suppose i don't know what's in them things but i suppose they're meant to make you feel better and i was feeling a lot worse and i tried you know the language barrier wasn't great and i tried saying to the nurse you know that obviously that i wasn't getting any sort of medication and could i have some to take you know just some pills to take and the nurse you know once i'd finally got that over to her she'd just come back in and like i was in like this caged bed thing which had sides on it and i couldn't get out the bed and she just threw them on the floor and then switched the light out and I was in the pitch black searching around on the floor for these couple of tablets. And, you know, they didn't even give me water to take the tablets. We was trying to swallow these tablets. And, yeah, it wasn't a nice place to be. Anyway, yeah, um, I'm over it now, to be honest. I'm back home. I've got to thank everyone that helped me out whilst, you know, I was ill. It's and, uh, and and yeah yeah it was yeah it wasn't a great experience to be honest and this is not the way i wanted to finish this diary to be honest with you you know with uh, i wanted this to obviously document you know everything that's going on so so you know i've got to say exactly what what went on at the end there and yeah i ended up in hospital we think i had pneumonia to be honest with you you know i think that was the outcome of it all some people said that you know I probably did have coronavirus you know, I really, really wasn't well. You know, when I got home, I was hallucinating that there were stones pouring out of my eyes and that there was loads of rats running around everywhere. Very odd, <laughs> let me tell you. And yeah, I was in a bad place, a really bad place. So I have to thank everyone that helped me out 
whilst I was out there, get home, especially James and Steve and uh, and all of the DNA guys and um and yeah, my missus were looking after me when I got back home as well. Yeah, I, I can't thank you guys enough to be honest with you. So I can't end this on a on a bad note. So I, you know, the boys whilst we were out there they had it off you know they had such a good session and the filming was going so well as well you know and james did his best to film everything that went on from the moment i, I got ill the problem is is you know, I've got a vision in my head of how I wanted the film to be shot. And then where I got ill, James took over from that point. And then, you know, it sort of took his role. And I've looked at the footage and it's a bit difficult to put something together. So I suppose I might as well put something together for this diary. Just a few, you know, sort of highlights of how the boys got on out there. They did really, really well. And it would have been amazing to have ended the Winter Series 5 with this session but like i say unfortunately it's it's hard to put a story together especially when you've got two different minds on it etc so yeah here's a, a sort of collaboration of a lot of the pigs that the boys caught whilst we were out there and um and yeah thanks for watching my first video diary we're all in lockdown now so i don't know how the next one's gonna go to be honest with you i should be fishing out on the island at the minute but you know it's it is one of them over at kingsmead but Hey ho, it's, it's like I say, it's one of them. Thanks for watching my diary, and uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Let's be friends. <laughs> oh, put out something you wanted, and no doubt you might be wrong. I think it was nine takes last night in total, uh, landing six fish. Uh, this, is, as I say, was is, is my PB at forty-eight pound. Another borderline. But on on the plus side is, yeah, I've he come didn't fishing, give us coronavirus. I've, I've come fishing with a good mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's now that we know I've my gear shit. Him <laughs> and let him use my charm. So, Doesn't Nick's boat go backwards? Yeah, it does also. Well. Instead of forward, Look, right. Only when you press forwards. It, it goes, goes backwards, backwards. I'll say. We've not been able to use it. When you press boat. left, it goes right. Yeah, okay, when you press yeah, right, yeah, yeah. it goes left. I'm with you. I'm with you. There we go. Second fight of the trip, and this time a common. This is probably the hardest fighting fish that I've ever caught from a lake. Awesome. Look at that, 48 pound, two ounce. I had four fish at almost exactly the same time as yesterday this morning. So here we are, what a finish to the week. Another 50 pound from Creek Lake, Lake 5 on the DNA S7, all crumbed up with a few eight mils in it, seems to be doing the damage. This is my last fish of a 10 fish haul. Uh, been here a week, had a great time. Uh, great laugh with the lads and caught plenty of fish. If you're coming over a France, highly recommend the S7. Seems to be doing the damage for me anyway. Mm -hmm.